The United States wants to receive from Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky a detailed strategy for strikes against Russia. The US wants to obtain this plan before granting permission for strikes on Russian territory, Bloomberg reports. According to Bloomberg, during his visit to Kyiv, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and British Foreign Minister David Lamy planned to press Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and his team. They wanted to receive a long-term plan for the next year from him. According to Bloomberg's sources, Ukraine's partners want to better understand Kyiv's goals before making decisions. Bloomberg reports that no significant changes in restrictions are expected this week. However, President Joe Biden and British Prime Minister Keir Starmer will meet in Washington to discuss this issue. Ahead of the meeting with Blinken and Lamy, the Ukrainian president stated that during his meeting with Biden this month at the UN General Assembly, he will intensify his call for easing restrictions on arms supplies. The UK has likely already decided to allow Ukraine to use storm shadow missiles against targets in Russian territory. This has not been officially confirmed yet, The Guardian informs. According to The Guardian, the UK has already decided to allow Ukraine to use storm shadow missiles against targets in Russian territory. It is unlikely that this will be announced during the meeting between British Prime Minister Keir Starmer and US President Joe Biden in Washington on Friday. The media outlet notes that the joint visit of US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and British Foreign Secretary David Lamy to Kyiv might not have happened if a positive decision on storm shadow had not been made. The public statement about long-range missiles in Kyiv would likely be considered overly provocative. There are probably still restrictions around Ukraine's use of missiles with a range of over 300 kilometers to avoid rash or unnecessary attacks. Ukraine is receiving long-range missiles from the UK, the US and France. However, there are still restrictions on using them against targets in Russian territory. President Volodymyr Zelensky has announced that in September, he will present Ukraine's victory plan to President Biden and the two US presidential candidates. He emphasized that this will reveal whether allies are ready to support Kyiv's victory or merely contain Putin. Deputy head of the president's office, Mikhailo Podolyak, highlighted key points of the plan, including operations in the Kursk region, economic issues and political matters. Hurricane Francine slammed into the Louisiana coast Wednesday evening as a dangerous Category 2 storm that knocked out electricity to roughly 190,000 customers and threatened widespread flooding as it sent a potentially deadly storm surge rushing inland along the Gulf Coast. Francine crashed ashore in Terrebonne Parish, about 30 miles southwest of Morgan City, the National Hurricane Center announced at 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Packing maximum sustained winds a near 100 miles per hour, the hurricane then battered a fragile coastal region that hasn't fully recovered from a series of devastating hurricanes in 2020 and 2021. Morgan City Fire Chief Alvin Cockerham said the hurricane quickly flooded streets, snapped power lines and sent tree limbs crashing down. Power outages in Louisiana topped 190,000 hours after landfall, spread widely across southeast Louisiana. Blackouts affected the majority of homes and businesses in coastal parishes nearest where the storm came inland as well as their inland neighbors, according to the tracking site PowerOutage.us. The National Hurricane Center urged residents to stay sheltered overnight as the hurricane churned inland. The storm's projected path included New Orleans, where forecasters said the storm's eye could pass through. The sixth named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season, Francine drew fuel from exceedingly warm Gulf of Mexico waters, strengthening to a Category 2 storm with winds exceeding 96 miles per hour hours before landfall. Still dangerous, the hurricane began weakening as it rushed inland, dropping in less than two hours back to a Category 1 storm with top winds of 85 miles per hour. Francine continued moving northeast at a fast clip of 17 miles per hour on a path toward New Orleans, about 55 miles away. It was forecast to weaken further while pushing northward through Mississippi on Thursday, with widespread rains in the coming days bringing potential flash flooding to cities including Jackson, Mississippi, Birmingham, Alabama, Memphis, Tennessee, and Atlanta. It also raised the threat of spin-off tornadoes. Much of Louisiana and Mississippi could get 4 to 8 inches of rain, 
with the possibility of 12 inches in some spots, said Brad Reinhardt, a senior hurricane specialist at the Hurricane Center. Louisiana Governor Jeff Landry said the National Guard would fan out to parishes impacted by Francine. They have food, water, nearly 400 high-water vehicles, about 100 boats and 50 helicopters to respond to the storm, including for possible search and rescue operations. Since the mid-19th century, some 57 hurricanes have tracked over or made landfall in Louisiana, according to the Weather Channel. Among them are some of the strongest, costliest and deadliest storms in U.S. history. Morgan City, home to around 11,500 people, sits on the banks of the Atchafalaya River in South Louisiana and is surrounded by lakes and marsh.